one advances in years, I certainly in that latter group. But each of us has the spirit within us. Each of us has a spirit. It's how we use this. And when we talk about entrepreneurship and this entrepreneurial spirit, we're not only talking about people who are in the private sector, but the entrepreneurial spirit is also in all organizations, in all enterprises, whether we're talking about business and government, the nonprofit, the military, any organization. <coughs> Even in religious organizations, you need this spirit of entrepreneurship. Now we speak of the entrepreneurship ecosystem. Now what is it? It is an integrated system, including individual entrepreneurs and other individuals and organizations or institutions. Many represented at this conference today. Together they serve to aid or inhibit the individual initiative and the entrepreneur after the entrepreneur launches the organization. Now normally, the individual entrepreneur requires other organizations and individuals collectively. And this is known as entrepreneurship stakeholders. It's necessary to ensure success. Now, entrepreneurship stakeholders are numerous. They may include other entrepreneurs, government agencies, academic institutions with the faculty and students, the private sector, including investors and social leaders, cooperatives, communes, multinationals, private foundations, and a host of international agencies, and virtually the entire society and economy. Now, entrepreneurs the world over share similar traits. Now, I don't care whether you're talking about the United States, Malaysia, or any other nation in any other country in the world. The spirit of entrepreneurship exists. These entrepreneurs are vigorous, they're dynamic, they're passionate, they're creative, and also prideful. They have a commitment to achieve. Today, in the United States and most other nations, including Malaysia, small business enterprises are the bastions in creating new jobs and economic opportunities. And the world continues to change, especially as we have witnessed the economic and financial events during the last several years. We are fully aware about the economic difficulties confronting the European Union, as well as the ongoing challenges in the United States and other nations. In the United States, the economy today has slowly been recovering from the horrendous jolts from the 2008 financial meltdown. Many jobs have disappeared. Though there has been a steady rise recently, especially during the last couple of years, the median household incomes have been falling for the last several years in the United States. Stagnant in many cases. Many high-skilled jobs are in short supply. Health costs, this is an area that I know very well in terms of the healthcare business, continue to escalate, and which hobbles competitiveness outsourcing, offshoring, automation that have marginalized the working class. Through all of this, political leaders have been unable to agree on a consensus of broad action to stimulate the national economy. While the American economy is making a slow recovery, government cannot stand alone. Government leaders must be involved. Now, even in this turbulent period, the inventiveness and the creativity of the private sector have fostered entrepreneurs in their perennial quest for success. Now, <laughs> President Barack Obama has underscored the importance of entrepreneurship during his administration and on many occasions. He has stated, and I firmly believe, that entrepreneurs embody the promise of America. The idea that if you have a good idea and are willing to work hard and see it through, you can succeed in the United States. You can really succeed in any country. And in fulfilling the promise, the entrepreneurs can also play a critical role in expanding the economy and creating jobs. And this is the job of government every place, including in Malaysia. In the Startup America project, the federal government has taken concrete action to improve the environment for high growth entrepreneurship across the United States in five key areas to unlock the access to capital to fuel some startup growth. Secondly, to connect mentors and education to the entrepreneur. Thirdly, is to reduce barriers in making government work for 
for entrepreneurs. Rather than being an obstacle, they will assist, they will work together. And fourth, to accelerate innovation from the lab to the market for breakthrough technologies. And lastly, unleashing market opportunities in industries like healthcare, energy, and education that are so important, not only to the United States, but to any nation. And within the last fortnight, President Obama signed the Jumpstart Our Business Startups Act, or called JOB, J-O-B-S. And the JOBS Act is a combination of capital formation proposals to make it easier for enterprises and entrepreneurs to raise capital, including, and most important, this new crowd funding. Now, what is crowdfunding? It's a new term. I didn't even know anything about it. But crowdfunding means it will allow entrepreneurs and micro-businesses new and innovative ways to access capital over the internet. Now, this is truly remarkable. Now, for many small businesses and entrepreneurs, personal savings and appeals for money from family and friends are really the only way that you can get a business to start up. I went through this exercise eight years ago when I decided to <coughs> leave the lectern at the university where I was lecturing on entrepreneurship. And let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen, it's a little bit different when you are lecturing <laughs> behind the lectern to tell the students that cash flow is very important <laughs> and you cannot expand too rapidly. Let me tell you something, I have 70 professional clinicians that get paid every two weeks in a highly compensated field. And I can tell you it's a little bit different talking about cash flow from behind the lecture to actually doing it. <laughs> but it was a challenge and it was difficult. You know, I thought that I could go to the bank and say, I need X numbers of dollars. And the gentleman sitting across the table who was also a graduate of my university. <laughs> oh, Dr. Harris, so good to see you. But no money was forthcoming. No matter how great I was around the world, in my own community, I couldn't borrow all the money that I wanted. They could give you the money. You know, the bank is always very conservative. They said, yes, we will give you the money, but how about putting your home up for collateral? Well, I wasn't willing to do that. So I made a deal for taking the lesser amount of money to work a little bit harder, and now the bank is after us to borrow more money from them. But it's great to pay off the loan and to start making money after a couple of years. But we were very, very successful, and uh, we are successful because we worked very, very hard. And it's not one person. I didn't do it. The team did it together, and that's why it's very important to get the very, very good people. Well, let me get back to talking about entrepreneurship and having some of these little events coming about. Now, I really marvel about reading the Business Journal of Central California, which comes out every week. And you can see all the bankruptcies and also all the new businesses. Now, since 2008, we used to have very few bankruptcies in business. <laughs> but since 2008, and I'm not even talking about the bankruptcies of individuals, I'm talking about business bankruptcies. Every week, we had an enormous number of bankruptcies. But at the same time, we had new businesses being started since 2008. More businesses got started than businesses that went into bankruptcy. In America, there's a new business started every 11 seconds. Now, roughly, if you listen to the politicians talking today, that we have about 600,000 new businesses started up in America, and the opposition today says, well, we're only having 500,000 new businesses started in America. Well, it's a 500 to 600,000, it's a lot of businesses getting started. But on the other hand, we also have some bankruptcies. And bankruptcies will happen even in the best of times. You know, people, uh, you can be smart and still go out of business. You just do stupid things. So uh, we don't want to do anything stupid. We want to be smart in everything we do. And that takes a lot of hard work. Now. I had the occasion of going to Greece last month. Now, I mean, if you've been following 
the Greek situation, you'll see that country is really in deep, deep trouble. Greece is badly splintered. The population has wide disgust with the country's deepening recession and the spiraling unemployment. 50% of the youth, 50% of the youth between 18 and 25 are out of jobs. The official unemployment rate in Greece today is 25%. And you talk about the social fabric of a country coming apart. It's coming apart in Greece today. But in spite of the situation in Greece today, the entrepreneurs are still living in spite of the government, in spite of the regulation, in spite of the drag. Entrepreneurs are alive and well. And this is, I had really the rare opportunity of meeting some of these people during the week that I was traveling throughout the western part of Greece. Now, in spite of all this unfavorable and dire assessments of the Greek economy, entrepreneurs will be the ones that will be pulling the country out. It's also important that they can't do it themselves and they also need the political will and the stability of the government because entrepreneurs cannot live unless there is a partnership with the government. And I can see here in Malaysia, because my first visit to Malaysia was about 40 years ago before most of you were born. And it was wonderful. It was really great coming to Malaysia in those days to go to Penang and to go to Ipoh and to come here in, uh, in uh, Kuala Lumpur. But it was such a small little city. And I remember going to the Federal Hotel, which was kind of the best hotel at the time. And you imagine the Federal Hotel is still around. But, and, and, and also to go into Penang in the old E&O before the new E&O was rebuilt. And I was there in November uh, with my colleagues here from the embassy. And what a beautiful place. But things change. People change. And the startup, 10, 11 years ago, I was back again, and I saw the beginning of the startup in Penang. And what has happened to this country? It's just really amazing. And, and who, who did it? One person? A group of people. There was a collaboration between the government and the individuals to make life better, to increase the standard of living. And education plays a very, very important role. It's a collaborative process for everybody coming together. So the problems in Greece, the problems in Italy, Spain, Portugal, Ireland, they face a very, very tough future. And what you need is there's a need to create a competitive small business environment for innovation. And the evolution of ideas from a small business and ultimately to entrepreneurial success has been the stimulus for re revolutionary change in both the United States and also in Malaysia. And this sequence of events will be required to keep job growth in the future growing because without it, you're not going anyplace. Now, what I like to do is keep on time to make sure that your coffee is...